this is lecture 31 of condensed matter physics 1 and I will be solving some problems related to phonons, thermal conductivity, uh, d by temperature etcetera in this lecture. The first problem that I have is estimate the mean free path of phonons in germanium at 300 K using the information is thermal conductivity at that temperature is 80 watts per meter per Kelvin theta d by is 360 K atomic weight is 72.6 and density is 5500 kg per meter cubed and finally, speed of sound in germanium is 4500 meters per second. This problem is taken from Rosenberg solid state physics and here is the solution. As we have been writing the thermal conductivity is one third C V V L and we want to estimate L. C V is specific heat per unit volume. Keep this in mind, this is specific heat per unit volume. Now, what you are given is the specific heat uh, we want to do the calculation at uh, at 300 and what you are given is the theta d by and just remind you that C v goes very quickly up and then becomes almost a constant. This is 24 joules roughly per mole per degree Kelvin should not be there. And here it is T cube behavior and you roughly here at this point at theta d by. So, I am going to take C V to be 24 joules per mole per Kelvin for my estimation. So, I am applying this formula K equals one third C V V L C V is 24 joules per mole per Kelvin that means 72.6 grams of germanium 
as CV24 joules per Kelvin. To convert to meter per meter cubed, I will take 5500 density kg per meter cubed is the density. So, C V per unit volume is therefore going to be 24 times 5500 divided by 72.6 times 10 raise to minus 3 to convert into kilograms. And then I can write my formula K which is given to be 80 is equal to one third times 24 times 55 100 divided by 72.6 times 10 raise to minus 3 and v we are going to take speed of sound that is 45 100 and l is what I want to find out. So, you get cancel this you get 8 this you cancel you get 10. So, l comes out to be equal to 10 times 72.6 times 10 raise to minus 3 divided by 5500 times 4500 meters and that comes out to be 29.3 nanometers. So, the phonon mean free path at 300 k is roughly of the order of 30 nanometers. Just to remind you that since we are making an estimate, I took k to be one third C V V L. This I took to be at you know uh, high temperatures roughly 24 joules per mole per Kelvin. This I took to be V sound and this is what we calculated. Okay. Problem number 2 and this is on computer simulation and this will also be given in your assignment to complete. So, we are going to model thermal conductivity for a one dimensional crystal and you can easily do it for 3 D also. I am just giving it in 1 D because I have asked you in your assignment to do C V for 1 D crystal. You replace C V for 1 D crystal by C V for 3 D crystal and you will get the problem for 3 D also. So, I am asking you to take a 1 dimensional chain of atoms for which omega equals some omega 0 mod sin k a by 2 and this we have done in previous lectures. Then using d by model C V is given as 2 k b square t square over pi omega 0 a h cross integration 0 to h cross pi omega 0 over 2 k b t x over e raise to x minus 1 d x. Now, this is not C V, this is its derivative is C V. So, this one is the total energy.
this is what I want you to do using a computer. So, just want to point out here recall a problem from lecture 27 and correct it for a factor of 2. Now, you take some number take v equals some some number and this will depend on how you are taking other numbers. And combine boundary scattering and umklap. scattering to generate a schematic curve for thermal conductivity T versus T and compare with that given in literature. In the literature, what you are given is for 3 D material, I am just asking you for 1 D, but that is ok. I mean general features would come out if you do it for 3 D, you know once you do it for 1 D, you can also do it for 3 D and you will find that it matches quite well and you can play around and I just want to point out that it is a log log plot in the literature. So, you got to plot a log log plot. So, let me see how you go about doing it. Number one, write a computer program to get CVT. So, what you will do is you know you, you take this 2 k b square t square over pi omega 0 a h cross 0 to h cross pi omega 0 over 2 k b t x d x over e raise to x minus 1. So, you do this integral using a computer. And then you differentiate that is number 1 and number 2 differentiate this expression with respect to T. That is how you get C V and along the way to facilitate calculations what you will do is take normalized units. So, you can take h bar to be 1 k b to be 1 and choose other some you know other other numbers conveniently. Once you write the program you will see what gives you reasonable uh, values for x and y coordinates. And then step number 2 you take v equals some constant you can even take it to be 1. Step number 3 you take I want to combine the two scatterings. So, take the collision time to be tau boundary scattering times 
ตาวอมกลับ divided by ตาว boundary s c a t t e r i n g plus ตาวอมกลับ take ตาว boundary s c a t t e r i n g doesn't change it's just the dimension of the system divided by v s so you take tau tau boundary scattering to be 0.01 let's say and take tau u m c l a p to be some tau zero e raised to theta d by by t this we had discussed how it comes about so Because e raised to theta divided by t is roughly the number of uh, phonons that are scattering other phonons. Now tau zero, take this to be tau boundary scattering divided by some 10 or 100. You want tau zero or the umclap scattering to be small so that boundary scattering doesn't dominate for a long time. So you put that and then you come, you know, you, you take all this and then you calculate. You don't have to worry about that factor of one third CV that you have calculated as a function of temperature, then V square times tau, and you plot it. So when you plot it on log log plot, so let me write log kappa and log t. What you will find, since this is one dimensional, you'll get a linear. Variation here, then it goes up and comes down like this. Then you play around with theta d, take theta d to be different, and you will find something like this, or you may find something that goes up and comes down very sharply. So play around, and it will tell you, give you a feel as to how, when theta d by changes, how the thermal conductivity is affected. And I'll let you guess which one is for large theta d by here, and which one is for small theta d by. So this becomes a very nice simulation, and you learn a lot through this. Then once you get this generalized to 3D, also the only difference that will come, general features would remain the same. For 3D, you will get a uh, you know slope out here rather than one; it's, it's going to be three on the uh, you know low temperature side. Problem number three. Estimate the relative importance of U processes contribution to. Thermal conductivity at 100K and at 20K for a crystal that has theta d by equals 300K. This is also taken from Rosenberg solid-state physics. Solution. If you recall from lecture 30, what happens is that. At low temperatures, very small k are excited, and when two phonons interact, they create a new k, which is within the Brillouin zone. So that also keeps on conducting the heat in the same direction. On the other hand, if I take higher temperature and phonons with roughly half the Brillouin zone. Size combined, then 
the net K goes out of the Villeneuve zone, which by subtracting the reciprocal space vector is equivalent to this K. Uh, I should be making it the other way. I made the same mistake in yesterday's lecture. It's the other way. And therefore, this starts going the other way and does not conduct the heat in the same direction and therefore, impedes the thermal conductivity and therefore, it starts coming down. So, roughly this happens, mm, this happens at k roughly equals k d by by 2, because that is when uh, the two k's will combine to take the k outside the Bloomer zone k d is my or theta d is my scale of uh, temperature or scale of the, the size of Bloomer zone in these problems. So, you want k at that temperature to be roughly equals k d by 2 and then u processes. Set in. That means the number will become important as a function of temperature when I have theta d by 2 t. This is the kind of temperature I want for for u processes to set in and at temperature T, this is the relevant number of phonons for U processes to set in. N is actually inversely proportional. N is, let me write, is proportional to 1 over e raised to theta d by t minus 1 and I want actually not theta d, but theta d by 2. So, this will goes to e raised to minus theta d by 2 t. So, relevance at temperature t those those phonons which are relevant for u processes are going to be given roughly like this and therefore, if I want relative number of phonons relevant to u processes at t 1 divided by oh, this, this is not a right, number of phonons relevant to u process at t 1 divided by number of phonons relevant to u processes at T 2 is going to be equal to e raise to minus theta d by 2 T 1 divided by e raise to minus theta d divided by 2 T 2, which is equal to e raise to theta d by 2 1 over T 2 minus 1 over T 1. Obviously, higher the temperature more relevant uh, more u processes are going to be setting in and you are given T 1 to be equal to 100 K T 2 to be equal to 20 K and theta d by to be equal to 300 K. So, you get this this relative importance okay, in terms of these numbers and that's why I am putting it in quotes is equal to e raise to 150 1 over 20 minus 1 over 100 and that comes out to be let me write it on the next page. So, you are finding number of phonons 
at T1 relevant to U processes divided by number of phonons at T2 relevant to U processes and this we have written is E raised to theta d by by 2 1 over T 2 minus 1 over T 1 which is E raised to 150 1 over 20 minus 1 over 100 for the numbers given and this comes out to be equal to 403. So, this implies U processes will contribute about 400 times more at 100 k than at 20 k when theta d is given to be 300 k. So, this this kind of gives you a feeling you see in most of these problems I am using words like estimate using roughly what is the value because we are using all these qualitative arguments. So, we are saying it is about 400 times it could be 450 it could be 500, but that is the kind of order that one is talking about. Finally, problem 4 that says the d by temperature of diamond is 2000 K. Imagine this, this is a very, very high temperature and it is for this reason that the thermal conductivity does not start coming down until it has hit a high value. So, diamond is a very good conductor of heat because of its high theta d and the, the, the conduction takes place not by electrons, but by phonons. So, despite being an insulator, diamond is a fantastic conductor of heat and it is conducted by phonons. Its density is 3500 kg meter cubed. Its atomic weight is 12, carbon has atomic weight 12 and interatomic spacing. This has to be taken with a pinch of salt because you know it is an FCC, the shifted FCC structure. So, when I say 0 0.15 nanometers, it is one of those lengths calculate the speed of sound in diamond and then make an estimate dominant phonon wavelength at 300 k again taken from Rosenberg solid state physics. See what you are given. You are given density rho 3500 kg meter cubed, atomic weight 
well and we want to know the speed of sound theta d by is given to be 2000 k so let me just remind you what we do in the d by approximation we take the dispersion to be omega k equals v sound k linear dispersion and then we fill this device sphere up to a d by wave vector so that omega d is equal to V s k d and all modes of vibration of a given polarization are filled by this. sphere and therefore, what you get is L cubed over 8 pi cubed times 4 pi by 3 k d cubed equals number of modes and this gives you k d equals 6 pi square number density raised to one third. Once I know k d then I can write V sound equals omega d over k d. So, for to solve this problem I need to find k d omega d or theta d is given. So, k d is 6 pi square d number density raised to one third and number density is going to be equal to 6 pi square times the density which is 3500 kilogram per meter cubed divided by twelve and for each twelve grams I have six times ten raised to twenty-three numbers and this is I'll convert this into kilograms this raised to one third that's k d and you calculate it this comes out to be 21.8 times 10 raised to plus 9 meter inverse or 2.18 times 10 raised to 10 meter inverse. This is what we have seen in lectures this is k is always of the order of 10 raised to 10 meter inverse and therefore, v sound is going to be omega d divided by k d which is equal to k b theta d is the energy related to d by temperature divided by h cross that will be omega d k d. You plug in the numbers this is 1.38 times 10 raise to minus 23 times 2000 divided by h cross which is roughly 10 days to minus 34 and k d we have calculated to be 2.2 times 10 days to 10 and this comes out to be 1.26 times 10 days to 4 meters per second that is the speed of sound in diamond. So, you see all these things are related to each other and d by approximation we know works pretty well at low temperatures. So, you can take these numbers seriously. Now, we want to find lambda t that is the wavelength dominant at temperature t. If you recall the previous lecture what I have is this Fermi sphere which is filled up to k d and at temperature t modes only up to some k t are really excited. 
So, it is this k t that gives you lambda t and the way we worked it out is that lambda t comes out to be h v s over k b t, where we found v s h we know rest are all constants. So, at temperature 300 this you plug in the numbers 6 times 10 raise to minus 34 times 1.26 times 10 raise to 4 divided by 1.38 times 10 raise to minus 23 times 300 comes out to be 1.82 nanometers. So, we can say that dominant wavelength at 300 k r in the range say 1 to 2 nanometers. It appears as if this is independent of theta d by, but it is not because it comes in the theta d by or k d comes in through V s. So, they are all related with each other. So, with these four problems uh, let me conclude, but before that I want you to show also that lambda t can be written as lambda d by theta d by by t. So, at temperatures lower than theta d by is the longer and longer wavelengths that dominate and this is what we used when we considered the scattering of phonons by impurities in a crystal. So, with this let me conclude the lecture. Some problems related to C thermal conductivity theta d u processes and on simulation.